this is literally everything your tech and paint schools have told you not to do. <laughs> you know what I mean? Hi Chris. What's up? Guess what we're doing today? What are we doing? We're doing something that a lot of people try to do at home yeah. when it comes to interior colors. I know when I was a young lad in high school, <laughs> I did terrible spray paint trim jobs yeah. Just like all of us do because <laughs> we want to be different and have our interior look different and also it makes you feel like you've done something to so your yeah, car. Kind of make it a little custom. And you have some terrible off color that does <laughs> not work. And it's sticky in the it's summer. A, oh yeah, in the yeah. summer you feel it peeling off and oh it's just awful. Yes. But what if you were to do interior trim with professional level paint? Hmm. Oh my God, that's what Chris does. Now, what Chris is going to do is do basically a style called splatter. And with splatter, you might have seen it with our buddy Rob Raybon. He did the Plasti Dip kind of splatter yep. kind yep. of technique when it comes to Plasti Dip. That was super cool. Yeah. Absolutely. And at first, people hated on him because it was super different. It was yeah, it was different, but at the same time, it kind of set him apart. Everybody was like, "Oh, that's that Mustang." And then everybody, everybody it, so. did it. But this time around, we're gonna make sure that the colors go with the car overall, yeah. and yeah. then tie in a little bit of that Duna Blue into the dash. Bit, yeah. This is super simple for somebody <laughs> to remove their dash Absolutely. and bring it to Chris at SSR Collision. That's right, I am plugging him because he does these all the time and he even does Mr. Crow. I do. Like real OEM Mr. Yeah. Crow. Okay, Absolutely. enough talking, let's actually get started. Let's take the dash Boom. out. The last time we took out the dashboard, we did this really cool passenger screen, which here's a little clip of that. It was really neat. What we're gonna be removing is is this piece, uh, the piece around the, the headlight uh, switch, um, and then this dash all the way across here, and then the one to match on the other side. So it's basically just those four pieces. So to remove them first, uh, the first thing we're gonna do is, most of these will pull off with your hand. Uh, sometimes you may have to get a little plastic trim tool in there, uh, but this one just basically, you just grab it in there, and just yank it off and it's just held in with some clips there. So a lot of people get worried, they think like, oh man, like I'm not gonna be able to pull my dash apart. Like it sounds bad when you're pulling it apart because of the screws and stuff like that, or the, not the screws. The clips. The clips and stuff, they, they end up, you know, snapping, not snapping, but making like, those cracking sounds and stuff, you know. It literally sounds like when you do it right that you're breaking the clips. <laughs> the first time I did any sort of interior work, it absolutely terrified me <laughs> because you hear it, you pop it, and I did break clips my first time, so that does not help that the first time I did it, I broke clips. But once you kind of get how to pry off a piece in the interior, Makes it sense. adapts to every manufacturer that yeah. uses clips. Two clips down here, two clips here uh, after you pulled the bolt off. Uh, and then it's just a little push pin clip in there. And then to pull this out of here, there's four little uh, plugs here and you can hear the car's going crazy because it knows it, it lost its little, little thing. knob. Squeezing, pushing it forward and it'll come out through the front. Now, while the dash is being painted, we're gonna plug this back in and just let it kind of rest in there. It's not gonna snap in, it, it's kind of loose, but the car won't make any noises and you'll still be able to drive it without it. So, so with this one, we're just gonna grab and just try and work it loose. There we go. There we Boom. go. Boom. We'll have to remove these vents out of here. Uh, they are just these little uh, chrome clips here. You just push them forward, two of them will pop loose. Wastegate. Wastegate. <laughs> My compressor's got a blow off out. <laughs> All right, and now this is ready to be prepped for paint. I think these do look pretty nice from the factory. Mm -hmm. They don't look terrible. Like the 13, 14, 11 through 14, they need some love, but yeah. these look pretty good. And he, I tell you what, I have seen every, almost every dash that I've painted from the S550s, I've seen this design, I've seen them look like brushed steel, I've seen them look like carbon fiber, I've seen them look just plain blacks. There's so many different versions of this dash, but they all prep up the same. They all, they'll all look the same when they're all done. When they're all done. When we sand it, there's actually it. It looks plastic uh, underneath. These are actually a thin layer of aluminum underneath of here. So you might see once we get to the edge, it might burn through a little bit, but that's completely fine. We're gonna end up. Uh, you know, priming over it anyway. But if you don't <laughs> sand, it's going to flake off. 
And like, like literally you'll go like this. This is what happens with a lot of people spray paint their dashes and they just BS it. They go yeah. boop and it'll chip right it'll off. It'll just chip right off. Yeah, so when we do this, uh, we sand it with 320 grit um, to get the primer on it. Once we prime it, uh, we'll follow back with 600 grit after it's dry, which we'll end up baking this and drying this. So. Uh, we'll sand it with 600 grit so it's nice and smooth, uh, and then we'll put a sealer over it in the, the corresponding color uh, for whatever it calls for. What you know, if we use a dark color or light color, we'll use the corresponding sealer, um, and then put base coat direct over it, splatter it, clear coat it, sand it, and then clear coat it cool. again. So let's do it. Safety first, especially when you're sanding. OSHA first. You, <laughs> you do not want to breathe this stuff in. No, this stuff's bad. Once you, once you sand it, um, I mean, you can get all the large areas, but what you're really looking for now, like with going by hand is like all your little, the little areas that you couldn't get with the sander because you know, yeah, it may look like, oh yeah, that's completely sanded, but like down in here isn't sanded, nothing's gonna stick mm -hmm. to it. So you're just trying to do another layer, you know, to make sure that you got everything, make sure you get all of your edges and stuff because paint's not gonna peel in the middle of a panel. It's gonna peel on one of the edges and then propagate through the paint job. In the most just, inconvenient places. It's gonna look like crap. It'd be good for like a rat rod. Look. Yeah, like this brushed aluminum yeah, basically. Yeah, patina look. I always do the worst, the hardest pieces first. Yeah. Just cause I get it out of the way. Yeah, cause these aren't gonna take that long, mm -mm. these little guys. What I'm really excited about is that I've actually seen Chris's finished products a lot, but I've actually never seen it be done. So it's gonna be really fun to watch him. And hey, Chris, you literally said you have no idea what they're gonna look like when they're done, right? Yeah, I mean, when I start them, when I start splattering them, I, I don't know how they're gonna turn out. Like, I have an idea in my head with the color scheme, like how they're gonna look, but you don't know how they're gonna look until you start putting paint on and then you kind of like, well, it needs a little bit more. It needs a little, you know, you can't go less, but it needs a little more here. It needs a little bit more there. And you, you start slow and ramp it up until you go, all right, that looks good. And then the boom. car Picasso. Yeah. <laughs> I think what else is so funny about it too, is that this is literally everything your tech and paint schools have told you not to do. <laughs> you know what I mean? Don't have overspray. Don't splatter paint anywhere. Don't do this. And he literally breaks all the rules just to have a really unique look without it looking tacky. Chris saved the blue mask just for me. <laughs> we'll put three coats on, um, bake it, sand it, seal it, color, clear and then tomorrow probably we'll sand it and clear it again. What you doing Chris? Uh, so we're gonna put some guide coat on here basically to make sure that when we do sand this that we get it completely sanded remove all the orange peel out of it. Basically this just kind of goes over adds a little bit of some uh, black mark on it so we can see it. So we're sanding this. Now you can see where we've sanded and where we haven't and make sure that it's all smooth. So if you don't go over it enough, you'll see that orange peel still there. So we're gonna tack this off to get all the dirt, or not really dirt, but more so the dust. Anything that's still sticking to the surface so when we apply our base coat, uh, direct over top of this. Uh, you know, there's not gonna be any little dirt nibs in the paint or anything. It's base coat is now on thanks to the wonderful skills of Chris. Now with the wonderful skills of 80s Chris, 
we're gonna be splattering. Now with the splatter, we're gonna be doing with the black background, a white splatter primary, and a grabber blue splatter as kind of that last finishing touch to connect it to my YouTube channel. and be like an homage to Smurf out in the distance. <laughs> All right, Chris, let's see that Picasso. Oh, that, that skill. Oh, you're ruining my dash, what are you doing? What are you doing, bro? I feel like I'm seeing my 1996 kindergarten background, you know, when they did the photos. So you want to get some splatters, some droplets, uh, some long streaks. So I kind of, the way I do my sticks, I get them so that I can pinch here, so I can pinch at the end. And how hard I pinch this controls the size of, uh, of you know, the, the droplet going on. So if I want long streaks, I'll pinch hard and it'll leave lines in it, which is what we're trying to do. We don't want it just speckled and, and stuff like that. What do you think? That looks cool. I so like I sit it. there and kind of go back and forth and see like, okay, we may have a little bit of a, an area there where it's not much, but we don't want to overdo it. Right. So what we'll do is we'll dip like the tip because we only want a little bit in. Just kind of add a little bit. Chris, I think that is the perfect amount. I think that one looks pretty good. I like how you typically do minimal on the smaller pieces too, because yeah. it kind of adds an accent to it. It makes you look for the splatter rather than just a mess. Yeah, right? big, yeah. I don't, I don't want, I don't want it to be different than the, the main dash, but I also don't want it to look more intense, like overbearing. Than, exactly. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to see where I'm going to be here because that's gonna connect to one of those. So if I draw a line here, I need to match it on one of those. Bam. You may have got your shield. Oh, no! I was a little on the fence about doing blue with this, but now that I look at it, in my opinion, it won't look so moo-moo. It won't look like a cow, you know? <laughs> yeah. We'll start the boost up and then we'll bake this. And what that's gonna do is we don't wanna put blue on it right now because the paint's still wet. They would mix and then it would just be nasty. So we're gonna bake this real quick to harden up that white. Um, and then we'll come back, we'll splatter the blue on, bake that, and then we'll put the clear coat on, sand it, and then re-clear coat it again. Where do you want to put it first? Will this make or break the splatter dash, Chris? If, if it doesn't work, it's an artist rendition. <laughs> The blue is not too much. I thought it was gonna, I, I thought maybe it might be too much. A splatter here, splatter here, it's almost like mirrored. It's gonna be too much for some people. Oh yeah, probably. Somebody's gonna be like, that's, no. <laughs> I don't like that. It's you okay. ruined a perfectly good car. It is now day two in the morning. Chris, what did you do this morning? Uh, I sanded all of it down uh, to remove a lot of that, that roughness, uh, and then I re-clear coated uh, all the pieces. And now, They're in the smooth. sunlight, it's gonna look completely yes, different. Because on camera, it literally just looks black. But yep. once you get it into the sun, it's this completely different experience. Yeah, yeah, look at that. Oh yeah, I see it now. That sparkles crazy. It's almost like a stealth sparkle. Yeah. Because you only see it when it's in direct sunlight. You happy with it, Chris? Oh, I love it. I love it. Look how OEM that fitment is, even with something so wacky and different. Yeah. Nice and smooth. An homage to Murph. <laughs> Boom. Since there's now color inside the dash that's blue, I think I'm gonna do these calipers, grabber blue. That way there's something to tie it in. Chris, I have a very important question for you. Yes, sir. How did you wrap the dash so well? <laughs> Years of experience to wrap it so good it looks like paint. <laughs> You're satisfied? That's dope. It's a lot longer of a process than people think. It is. Yeah, people think it's like a, a one day thing. Like it takes time to do it. <laughs> it takes time to do it right. All right, Chris, I am extremely happy with the dash. It good. actually feels like it's my car now. It does. It kind of yeah. personifies you in, in a, a paint job, if so to speak. So You trying to say I'm a hot mess? I wouldn't say you're a hot mess, but the, the color wise, I think fits you good, so.
though. On that note, if you'd like to have your dash done like this, make sure to check out SSR Collision. Tell Chris that I sent you, because it really does help him. On that note, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you dig it. If you hate it, let me know too. <laughs> On that note, have a wonderful day. Upload every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. Goodbye. This video is brought to you by Patterson Car Care. Get double of premium original detail product for half the price. Head over to PattersonCarCare.com or go to the link in the description below.